Hello and welcome to the Army Talk Fast Five brought to you by Takeoff and the AM Consumer and Retail Group. Today is February 11th, 2021. I am your host, Chris Walton, joined as always by Anne. For the love of God, don't call that a Pyrrhic victory, Mazinga. And every <laughs> internet CEO's new best friend, Emma the intern. Emma, whoa, big news. Like cold calling is cold calling CEOs this week and have and sit down on meetings with them. Give me give me the sit rep. What's the details on that one? Yeah, so I sat down with one of the digital digital presences out in the outdoor spaces. We won't say one who, because we don't want his inbox flooded. Yes, I'm, okay. I know. Yeah, but <laughs> so we were just talking about you know. I went in there with a, I'm trying to figure out what to do with my life. How'd you get to where you are? And we just got to just kind of talk about life. And he suggested all different kinds of things that I can do. What are the best entry level kind of job strategies? Where's the industry going? So it was super fun. Nice. And our interns all grows up. Our I know. Up. She's looking for a job. Awesome. Yes. I'm so excited that you had awesome. that experience, Emma, and says a lot about the the CEO we will not name, but you know yeah. who you are, and that was really incredible. So, yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, keep going, Emma. Him. But yeah, that's super cool. Speaking of touching fame, I actually literally just five minutes ago got off a two hour long presentation to the entire executive team at Giant. Whew! I am I am raring to go here. You guys. are I'm, excited. I can feel it coming through the Zoom screen, man. Yeah, we were talking about everything, man. It was crazy. We were going deep on like workforce management, technology, computer vision, store of the future. Like it was just cool stuff. And they were super engaged. Like I had about a 45 minute presentation prepared and we ended up going two hours just based on all the questions. So so I'm flying high. Like feels good to get that thing done. And on the start at 7:30 this morning, it's like negative. What was degrees. what was your like pump it up song? What what did you listen to? Was it your like oh, traditional oh Eminem Eight Mile soundtrack no. or what's going so, on? Oh my god! So no, today was terrible because I woke up <laughs> and I texted. I, I forgot you knew this. Like I texted you. For some reason I had Carly Rae Jepsen in my head. Like oh no, I don't listen to that stuff. But I'm like in the shower and it like won't go away. I'm doing the dishes, <laughs> making an omelet, you know, because I gotta have a good amount of protein and like call me maybe and like it's just it's still there too like and just, in everyone everyone listening's ear now too that you've ruined that's it awful. we will not sing that day. and we will not sing that but all right i have to we, before we get started there's some some super cool headlines some big stories in the news today but you know hey i want to talk about something that's kind of been a bee in my bonnet and that mm -hmm. is we put out an internet poll uh on linkedin this week and i want to make sure i've got the statistics exactly right because we asked who is the bigger goat of all time tom brady and jeff bezos and 59 percent of those that responded said jeff bezos and i just don't get that and I you're surprised by this yes it's definitively tom brady this is when i think this is when i have to go against the the listeners like it's definitely tom brady why do you guys think it's jeff bezos yes yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is like a little too close to home for you. I just yeah, think that's yeah. the problem. You just, <laughs> your love for Tom Brady is so runs so deep and so true that you are blinded by that love so you, and so you, you don't you, see you, reality. So you think him at the apex of my man crush, Tom Brady, Bradley Cooper, John Ferner, and Dennis Leary, you think that might be clouding my judgment? I believe it is. We might need to have a love intervention here with your man crushes. <laughs> I think that's Chris. probably too. John, did you see John Furner's now my, in my Mount Rushmore too? Who are your guys's though? Okay. Like that's been the thing for me is like, I've been extolling my love and all the virtues of Tom Brady, TB12. Who are yours? Like, and if you had your Mount Rushmore of crushes, who would it be? Well, you <laughs> asked us this question, like for the audience listening a, a little bit in advance to give me a heads up. And I'm a little embarrassed to say- drop that. Yes. No, I'm glad you did. I still don't know that I have an answer because I'm, I, this is like maybe not podcast appropriate, but I don't have any crushes that I don't actually have like a crush. So non-platonic crushes. You have no non-platonic crushes on anyone. Yeah. And I'm a little embarrassed to say okay. that, but I was like, look, I was trying to think of people and like, I guess the people that came to mind were like Maya Rudolph, um, Justin Timberlake, Justin, yeah, okay. Donald Glover, like, but okay. all these people, I'm kind of like, I mean, Hey, Hey girl. Hey, you know, yeah. there's some, there's, there's some connection there too, with some of those I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Emma, what about you? 
Well, I took a more like who do I admire approach to the question. Yeah, that seems like the way to go. That's there. probably yeah. more appropriate. Probably yes. different than Anne's approach. Yep. Yeah. So kind of mine, mine, too. <laughs> mine are Michelle Obama, Serena Williams, Mark Cuban, and Roger Federer. Ooh, Mark, oh, Mark lots Cuban's of tennis player in there. Like yeah. Yeah. I, I admire the tennis people. I can't play tennis for my life, but they are just so like well mannered. Serena well, actually got a vote as goat too on the poll. I you know, I saw. Yeah. yeah. No. Hey, that's a good one though. I like those drops. Uh, Roger Federer is like way out of left field, but I, I don't know. You know, hey, whatever. He's just you. like the ideal human, I think. Like he's just so he's so cool. I watch YouTube videos of him all the time. <laughs> he's the ideal human. Oh my God, that's fantastic. I just think it's because <laughs> you like to tell time, you know, because he's Swiss, you know, and those jokes always land really well. All right. Well, anyway, let's get to the show today. We're going to talk about sh little shift in GNC. We're going to talk the latest Walmart and TikTok news. Then we're gonna spend some time on Walgreens and Uber giving free rides for vaccines, which is a story that Ann fought for really, really hard. And then we're gonna end with the put you on the spot question to Ann from AM on Cole's latest partnership this time with Eddie Bauer. And I have a feeling that Ann is gonna go on quite the rant on this one, maybe an all time or even surpassing me. But first, we're gonna start with two huge stories in the news related to Instacart. If you didn't hear, Aldi is now expanding curbside pickup with Instacart to over 500 stores after adding the service to 600 stores across 35 states last summer. And similarly, Family Dollar also announced that they too will use Instacart to deliver out of their more now wait for it, as Ann would say, 6,000 stores nationwide. Stop the world, Ann, because I think I might need to get off this Instacart world. What does this signal to you? Well, so let's take two approaches. Number one, Aldi expanding. In my mind, I think that they are actually going to be one to watch as a competitor to Amazon Grocery as that starts to roll out. I think mm. that they might be like the low price version um, of the Amazon Fresh stores. Yeah. And again, it worries me even more about those regional grocers and what they're going to do with Aldi expanding the way that they are. Expanding um, those capabilities, continuing income yes. divide, that kind of thing. Yes, sure. and adding the convenience that they're adding with curbside pickup, EBT, all the things. Mm -hmm. um, hidden stat in this story that I think is worth calling out that was kind of buried down there. Yeah, way, way buried. With the addition of Aldi and Family Dollar, Instacart now has 600 national, regional, regional, and local retail partners across 5,550 cities in North America and serves 25,000 stores. That's a lot, you guys. That is a lot of density across the country. And this is just like... I have, we'll talk about it and just shift in GNC because for me, I'm comparing this to like flip phones. Okay. We are in flip phone stage of marketplaces right now. We are about to enter in the next couple of years, the smartphone revolution where everything has changed. Mm -hmm. These platforms like Instacart shift, we'll talk about it in the next story, but these marketplaces are going to start becoming the first place destination. The user experience is still crap. You still have to go to Instacart and then find your retailer. But once this stuff starts flipping on its head, once we inject that smartphone into this, things are going to be very, very different and change the way we shop completely. Well, yeah. And that is a cool analogy, by the way, that we're in the flip phone stage of, of delivery marketplaces. I like that a lot. Nice, nice. That's great. The, the other thing about the story too, right? They have coverage it in, for SNAP recipients now at 90% of, of, of all, all these stores too. Like that's nuts. Like that now you can use online SNAP benefits with Instacart and Aldi at 90% of the locations. That's crazy. Emma, what do you think? Emma, the intern is like, is Ann just getting voodoo tin, tinfoil hat here? Um, how do you think of her qualification of a lot, which sounds super scientific as well? What, what do you, hey. what do you, what, where are you <laughs> also known as an S load in Walton parlance? What, what do you think here, <laughs> Emma? <laughs> I think, I mean, Insta, Instacart is killing it. And I think that it's going to be something that more and more people just get familiar with, especially once they can kind of really ramp up that customer, like user experience. But I think that that's going to be something that almost everyone, when they're thinking about when they need groceries or anything, is going to be like, well, if I can get that faster with Instacart, then I'm going to do that. Yeah, I agree. I, I think this is, I mean, Ann, your stats are amazing. Like Instacart has gone mass. 
I mean, it's going mass. I'm not even convinced Instacart needs to be a retailer anymore. I think that's the other takeaway I had out of this question is like, they're perfectly fine doing everything that they're doing. Like there's tons of business to be had on this marketplace as we move in this, you know, smartphone progression that you're talking about. And then look at all the other offerings now, like curbside was the important part of this story, right? We talked about that with Costco. They're now standing that up for people. They've got the partner pick program. Like, I don't, I don't know that it matters if they're a quote unquote retailer, as long as everybody comes to them for everything that they're carrying. Like, how do you think about, and plus it's probably a smart move for them at this point strategically. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I completely agree. You want to hear something crazy that I was thinking of too? Oh yeah. What if Instacart, like instead of moving in, we talk about them being a retailer. What if they started looking at the malls? Like what if, like I'm thinking about, you know, we were talking about Amazon taking over the mall as Instacart gains more and more retailers under their platform. And they start, you start thinking about what happens if they could take over the mall space. Like all their drivers are coming in and out of that space. It's like one location that's leveraging all the warehousing. Like they are, they turn the malls into not like malls that you're walking, but maybe just malls that you're like picking up from in one space. I don't know. I, it like, it's a, it's a far off concept. I realize, and I'm going to get so much crap from saying that, but I yeah, think, no, I mean, I think the, cold wild... weather here, the cold weather here in Minneapolis could be affecting your brain this morning, but like, that, that, is. but like, there's something to what you're saying though, just in general of like, we've talked about online mall marketplaces, like, yeah. At, at what point do they just all go to Instacart and like, we just yeah. call this a day and Instacart, like we've talked about works with those brands to serve up things in social media and that's just where we go, similar to how we go to Amazon right now. Right. That's what I think is so fascinating about this story. Okay, let's talk about the next story because I think it's important to this too. And you've got to look at these together if we're going to keep this stock blowing. So go for okay. it. Okay. So GNC and Shipped announced a new partnership that for the first time will bring same day delivery of GNC health and wellness products to consumers across the country. So Shipped customers, they can select GNC in the app on uh, Shipped.com or on Shipped.com and they can add any products to their order, vitamins, supplements, you name it, and they can get it delivered same day. So again, now we have Shipped coming into the space adding more retailers to their platform and that space significantly heating up and uh, throwing their little hat in the ring, huh? Yeah, I mean, and this, this you have a case of where Shipped is actually owned by a retailer. Like, let's, mm-hmm. let's point that out, right? That's very different than what we were just talking about. And now Target effectively in their online marketplace, which is what this is, if you get right down to it, now has GNC in their online marketplace. And they've been signing up a lot of other brands too. And so you've got now marketplaces on Instacart and Ship that are signing up brands and retailers that Amazon many times also doesn't carry if you think about this. Right. And so you talk, we've talked a lot on the show, Carter used to talk about it too, the line of commerce, right? It's a marketplace on one end, a social media connection on the other. Well, what you're seeing, what I'm thinking about is like, these companies can now insert themselves in front of Amazon in terms of the mind share of and the connection to that consumer around quick delivery. So they build this out enough. That's different. Like that is something to really, really watch, especially when you start talking about Target as a, a retailer and everything it could do. It makes me start to wonder, like, when do we see the changeover, right? Like, do ship drivers start wearing red at some point? And we start making that association as a full on Target marketplace because the retailers are so, you know, addicted to the drug induced hit of last mile delivery that they don't have another choice. Right. And they have to start selling through target and they're just comfortable with it. So I am the intern. You're going to get a lot of pushback from target and shift on that one because they are really trying to stay separate. But I think the point that you're making is that there's better, there's, there's maybe more advantages to joining that that partnership or fusing that together more so than I think they would like to say those two can talk about that all they want so the cows come home but like let's look at what they've done look at the leadership they brought Kelly Caruso in who previously at that time was a merchant throughout her entire career literally probably knew nothing about this space she's now leading that so like that's not the move you make if you're going to try to keep those things separate for the long term and then some of the other hires they brought in same type of pedigree so like that's going to happen and if i I have to believe if what i'm even like pontificating comes true like 
you have to think that's at least in conversation to some degree. So they can tell us all they want, but I'm just not buying it. Emma, the answer, what do you think? I think like just on a product level, I always go to Amazon for health and wellness things just because they come mm. fast and they're always less expensive. But GNC just has such a wider variety. And with Amazon, I'm always weary of anything that I'm going to be putting in my right. body just because it's like, yeah, I don't know where that really came from. But I think this is awesome. And I really hope that this really helps GNC get their product assortment out to the people. Dude, that's a fantastic point. Like you get these marketplaces too with established sellers not random third party <laughs> stuff that is, you know, you're kind of like, what is that? That's a whole nother angle to this in terms of the disintermediation. Wow. That's offensive. That's and offensive. the brands themselves, Point. like we're talking CPG brands themselves going direct to consumer now. I mean, how, how long is it going to be before, you know, Pepsi's snacks.com is delivering mm -hmm. same day via Instacart? Like, I mean, if you know the products the you're going too. to, yeah, yeah. Right. No, that's a good, wow, that's a good point. Or even just serving up advertising to have it fulfilled wherever they want to, mm -hmm. man, those, oh God, I love doing this show. That was a, that's a really, a really amazing point, Emma. I hadn't thought about that at all. Thank you. That is, no, that's a really pointed, big point of differentiation between the Amazon experience, right? You really get yeah. to know what you get in those. And so where are you going to go for your same day needs, man? That, that's interesting stuff. All right. Another thing on those lines that I think is important and disagreed with me wholeheartedly about putting this headline in the show this week. Uh, but I think it's very important. So I'm curious to see what her take is because she wouldn't tell me why either for those listening. But if you heard the news yesterday, TikTok sale to Oracle and Walmart is still on hold indefinitely. According to the Wall Street Journal, the sale has been put on hold because President Biden would like to quote, undertake a broad review of his predecessor's efforts to address potential security risks from Chinese tech companies, end quote. And if you remember, the TikTok deal has been basically stalled since last fall. This thing has been in the media for a long time. I personally think this is huge news, huge news. But Anne, you disagree. Why? I just think that there's still a lot going on. With all the antitrust stuff that the government is working through right now, I, I actually am okay with this pausing for Walmart because I think that they should table this and focus on some things that are more like, what other things could you do? How else can you get into next generation kind of concepts to get after that Gen Z audience? That's really what they were hoping to do this, expanding their advertising capabilities. Like it's an option, but what else is out there that isn't gonna come with a lot of, a lot of red tape in the next few years? Okay. So okay. That's I why I was like, it's like, they have tons of other stuff to do. It's not bad, that big a deal. It'll come. Emma, what smart, you, Emma, the intern. Smart people at Walmart. Let's work on some other things. They are John Furner, man crush. Emma, the intern, okay. what do you think? I mean, I never really expected this deal to, or this sale to really go through. Really? But no, I, I mean, I definitely understand like the security concerns, but at the same time, I know Gen Z, like we'll just hand our data out to anyone in China. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't know, do something useful with it, but yeah, I, I think Anne has a point though that there are other outlets for Gen Z. You know, we don't all lie in TikTok. There are other ways to get Walmart to connect with us. There, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I, I guess that's a that's a good point. There are other ways to think about it, but they're not. I don't think they're as clean and as easy. So, okay, well, let me throw down my case here, and you guys tell me tell me if I'm off base or if I'm even sniffing up the right tree, but. Given what we just talked about, right? Let's look at the line of commerce. You got a network on one, social media network on the other side that you're tapped into. So you can understand all of the implicit desires of your consumer in a way that your competitors can't. Well, who really has that? For the most part, we're just talking about Facebook and Instagram. Like that's who really dominates that headspace. Everything else is on the other side of the line, the commerce marketplace. We just talked about moving towards same day delivery, Amazon, we know firmly entrenched. We're now talking about disintermediation by way of Instacart, possibly ship the retailer. Walmart doesn't have a play there on that side. So I think that's dangerous. Walmart doesn't have a play there. The retailers aren't going to go to Walmart, right? That's the beauty of ship. They're kind of playing this game behind the scenes. The retailers like that, the brands like that, like we were just describing, like Emma, you were just describing so brilliant. Again, they're not going to do that. So Walmart's defenses are down there. And so if you think about connecting those lines, the other side of that equation, what's then Walmart's also in a little bit of trouble on the other side because they're not going to be able to control that mind share the way other players potentially could. And so to me, TikTok was a way for them to grab back something that they didn't have 
And so if this delays, one, it slows it down. If it doesn't happen, then I'm a little bit like, ooh, Walmart's getting squeezed on both ends now. What does that mean? And while I agree, and there are other things they can do, those are some two really big matzo balls dangling out there. And I'm not sure how you overcome that. So did I convince you? What are you thinking, Emma? You're kind of shaking your head, Emma, the intern. I definitely see your point. Like TikTok was by far the easiest way to go. But I do believe in Walmart's ability to, if this all falls through, figure something else out. I don't know what it is, but I believe in them. All right. All right. And? No, I don't. I, you didn't. I didn't, sell buy, I didn't sell anything at all. So sorry. I, and I don't think I, 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 I would even argue that, you know, when it comes to social commerce and how like that, that line, that spectrum that you keep sure. talking about, I would argue that that's even in a position where it could change significantly in the coming years. I think that what, like there's still so much that can happen with the deregulations with Facebook and Instagram. Like, I think that's start, gonna start that's to fair. get more segmented. And I think that, you know, it, it actually brings me back to what we were talking about last week, where you start to think about these marketplaces and what are the communities that you're bringing together as a retailer? Like how how is social commerce evolving in that way too? Like, because of the, the spaces that you're buying and interacting and, um, and maybe there is something that happens there. I don't know. Yeah. I think what I hear, I mean, I think those are great points. I think what I hear too, though, is that there's still a lot of maybes, right? Like we don't know. Yeah. I think the important point for me is maybe you're right. Maybe it's not the story, but it's still that it points light on that there could be some vulnerabilities or chinks in the Walmart uh, armor along these two dimensions. If you start to look five to 10 years out, depending on how these spaces take shape. Like if I'm sitting in Walmart boardroom right now, I'm like, damn, why didn't I buy Instacart five years ago? Like, yeah. right, that would have been like the best move of all time. Um, and now it's probably, you know, in theory too late. All right, let's keep on trucking. Keep on trucking here on a cold Thursday morning in Minneapolis. I think Emma, you got the next one, right? Yes, I have story number four. And story number four, it's just a nice story. This is the kind of story that you need to read to just be like, okay, there's hope in the world, I guess. But Uber is going to be offering free rides to Walgreens stores for people who book a vaccine appointment but do not have transportation and lived, live in underserved communities. I think this is just, thank you, Uber, for doing something like really useful to poor people who need this kind of help. And I mean, we really need to get moving faster on this whole vaccine rollout for this to really kind of be effective. But I think it's just a great story. So you love this. And you fought hard for this one. Why did you like this? Yes. So much? You know, I like this story. It is a feel good story. It's positive. But what I liked most about it is that I think it shows real partnership and outside the box thinking from two major companies and Walgreens also should get credit for this too. I mean, they're not just saying yeah. we're going to help distribute vaccines will be a location, but they went outside their silo. And I imagine that was they had to clear quite a few hurdles to, you know, get healthcare and retail and ride sharing technology, all able to share customer information and whatnot. And so I think that this, this should be uh, applauded for the work and innovation that they did. Plus, I think like, I don't know if, I don't know what the rules are on customer data beyond this, but when you start thinking about where Uber is going and, you know, trying to be that last mile delivery provider, and now Walgreens customers and Uber customers are matched up together. Like there's some real possibility there when you're starting to think about last mile for Walgreens and improving things like, you know, pharmacy delivery and things like that. I, I don't know. I, I think there could be more to this. So I like this story a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you convinced me. I think you convinced me there. I think you convinced me as we were talking about it too. I mean, you're right. This is not easy to pull off probably like in terms of like all the things and regulations governmentally, you got to get through to make this happen and, to, and, and, but Hey, and people need it. Right. right? Like, so Emma, like you said, that's important. I think the other thing is it's a great experimentation vehicle. And like you said, like you get a literal marketing vehicle. So now you've got these connections between Uber and Walgreens and you can experiment with what are all the things you can do inside of that trip and after that trip in a way you couldn't before. And by holy crap, there probably could be a lot of people that use this. I mean, we have to vaccinate what, like 200 million people. So right. like th that gives you a lot of platform to experiment with this. So not only is it like a altruistic decision, it seems like it's a good experimental decision also from a business model perspective in terms of how Uber evolves. And, and I thought your points too about like how Walgreens evolves and thinks about their delivery processes too. 
um, you know, is really intriguing as well. All right. Any other thoughts on that one? Let's no, go. Right. Let's close this out. I'm excited about this one. I think it's going to be an all-time rant and it's not going to be mine. It's going to be Anne's. I think that's my hunch. If you didn't hear the news, Kohl's this week is making another addition to its assortment, this time with the active and outdoor brand, Eddie Bauer. The company is going to partner with Eddie Bauer to offer a wide array, this is according to Chain Store Age, of different products for what I did not know this is a hundred year plus brand. It's going to launch in 500 coal stores. They're going to start with outerwear, of course, dip into a little fleece in flannel, which is what I ubiquitously think about when it comes to Eddie Bauer. And then they're going to expand items, of course, on the website. So, and the question for you from the yes. folks at AM. We have deep respect for what Kohl's has tried to do under Macell Gas. But is this strategy of just trying to become what it sounds like JCP intended, JC Penney's, with good old Ron Johnson and the shop and shop format, take away all the pricing craziness things that he did, is this the right way to go? Or is that value proposition of a one stop shop not even there anymore? Is, does this whole thing even solve a real customer problem? Like, what do you think? Are we being sold a bag of goods here or what? <sighs> Guys, yes, Guys. I took a sip of water because my number one, first thing I'm going to say, how is adding Eddie Bauer making Kohl's more of a one-stop shop? How is it? Like, I, I do not understand this. Okay. Kohl's, you were going in such a great direction. Great earnings reports. You added Sephora. Now, what the heck are you thinking adding Eddie Bauer? I'm sorry. You know, now two, two I, I have to say, since uh, Greg Parsons brought this to my attention earlier this week, I am having a little bit of Bader Meinhof this week where it's like, oh, now I'm seeing Eddie Bauer on like everybody everywhere. You know, like I don't, you don't think about Eddie right. Bauer for a long time. And now that this is brought to my attention, like I had someone came in this morning, they were wearing an Eddie Bauer jacket. I saw somebody in a Zoom call the other day wearing an Eddie Bauer fleece. Okay, I get it. There are there. This is a brand that people are still buying from, but I just don't see even how it differentiates from the offerings that Kohl's already has. How often do you need to go buy a, a winter coat? It's not like Sephora. It's not bringing you in there four times a month to come in and get something, you know, refresh products. Like I just do not get this. I do not think it's smart. Okay. I think it's Kohl's relying on old legacy retail tactics. It didn't work for Sears and Land's End. It's not going to work for Kohl's and Eddie Bauer. Okay. So that, okay. <laughs> Breathe. Cigarette. So let me ask you this. Are we missing something then? Because you brought up something like, and I want to go to Emma the intern on this too, but are we missing something? Because another loyal listener who we'll call Lumberjack Dave, and that's really how he signed his name. And this is an honest <laughs> to God, real statement. I am not BSing anyone. He said, I wear flannels almost daily, consistent sizing, very inexpensive and super soft. Are we missing something with this partnership? Like, is this actually something cool that people are going to come to a Kohl's store for? Emma, the intern, your thoughts first. Okay, hold your horses. But I think you're both wrong. Whoa. Eddie Bauer that the highest quality for the lowest price their products are like impeccable and I, I like they don't have the hype and the coolness and everything but i mean you want a quality piece of outdoor gear for a price that you'd expect at kohl's eddie bauer i think this will actually because eddie bauer doesn't have stores everywhere but kohl's does and i think you guys have a point where like it's not going to bring someone in but, and it doesn't help to the one-stop shop. But I think it's actually a great brand for Kohl's to bring in. Oh my God, my world is so far off its axis right now. And please <laughs> save me. What is yeah. going on here? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just still don't, I, I guess I still don't see it. Like just because you love, uh, no one's denying that the product is of good quality. I think the question here is, is it is giving them a dedicated shop and shop necessary? Like why not just go in and buy the brand? I mean, Eddie Bauer stores are not surviving. They've been up, they've been dealing with bankruptcy issues and all the, all kinds of issues with the store locations that they do have. So I guess I don't see where bringing this into a Kohl's is going to save anybody. I mean, I buy the brand then and start selling them inside Kohl's. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I can't get behind it. The things with that too, but like, 
I'm with you. I don't get it. I mean, all I keep thinking about is flannels and corduroys. My last Eddie Bauer purchase was in 1998. It was a green jumper, performance fleece jumper. Loved the thing, but haven't been back since. But like, here's the other, I sold Eddie Bauer car seats at yep. Target. Like, I mean, this is not a new thing. Eddie Bauer has been licensing their stuff forever. So I almost don't want to spend too much time on this story because Ian, I'm with you. I think it's interesting. They also released this story right after they had a fairly decent report in terms of sales were still way down, but they beat expectations. So then they released this story, which really isn't that cool. And had the earnings results been different, then I think people would be slagging the hell out of this story, which I think you have to kind of put into context. But Anna, I can tell you want to jump in here. What do you think? What I want to know what you need to go to an Eddie Bauer store for. If they're so consistent with sizing and all the other things, like why, I mean, what are you getting from an Eddie Bauer store that you couldn't get online if you, if you, if they have a hundred year established brand? Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I mean, I think that's the problem facing every specialty retailer right now, right? Like, so it's not, I don't, I don't really understand what job this is solving, which I think comes back to the root of the AM question too is, is this a real customer problem? Like a one stop shop for this stuff? I would say no, it's not. Like, yeah, it's cool. It's just another merchandising decision, but let's not blow this thing out of the water and make it cool, no matter how much people love. Eddie Bauer, which it sounds like Emma, the intern, and yeah, Lumber we're gonna Jack get Day we're gonna be just Greg Parsons, pummeled for this. A lot Chris, of other people fine. really might, but but hey, good discussion as always. But yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm still not on this Coles bandwagon fully, man. Like until they start doing some more stuff, I gotta see what it is that they're doing. I think there's still a long road ahead. All right, but that wraps us up today. A lot of cool birthdays. Jennifer Aniston today. Can you believe that one? That's oh, a man. One. How old is she? Falls on that day. Do they Maybe even release question. that or does she prevent that information for being? Yeah, no, public? I can figure that out for you. Hold on. Let me get that information. What Jennifer do you guys Aniston? guess? 50? 51. Five? I'm going to go 55. 55. I think I'm way Emma, 51. 51. I can't guess because I just accidentally looked, but it's actually 52. So Emma would be closest mm -hmm. to the pin on Jennifer Aniston's age. Other big birthdays today. I know this Anne's a big fan of this one. Kelly Slater, the former pro surfer. Ooh, He's yeah. 49. He I'll put him 49 on my years old. more. <laughs> Slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> and then everyone's favorite werewolf, Taylor Lautner. Believe it or not, Taylor Lautner today is 29 years old. I figured that guy was That's already in it? his 30s, but no. Oh yeah, he's only 29. God. That dude was a, he was a baby face babogue back in the day when he was shooting those, oh, those movies. Man. But remember, if you can only read or listen to one retail blog in the business, make it Omni Talk. Our Fast Five podcast is the quickest, fastest rundown of all the week's top news. And our twice weekly newsletter tells you the top five things you need to know each day and also features special content exclusive to us and just for you. And it's all done for you within the preview pane of your inbox, which let me tell you is not an easy thing to do every day. You can sign up today at www.omnitalk.blog. Thanks as always for listening in. Please remember to like and leave us a review wherever you happen to listen to your podcast or on YouTube. And of course, as always, be careful out there. The OmniTalk Fast Five podcast is brought to you by the a and Consumer and Retail Group and Takeoff. Takeoff is transforming grocery by empowering grocers to thrive online. The key is micro-fulfillment, small robotic fulfillment centers that can be leveraged at a hyper-local scale. Takeoff also offers a robust software suite so your grocers can seamlessly integrate the robotic solution into their existing businesses. To learn more, visit takeoff.com.